Hello Reborners, my name is Karen and this is Making Dolls with Karen. In this video we're going to go over the, pre the, the way you mix paint and the colors and all that stuff. So come make Reborn Dolls with me. Okay, as we went over in our other video we need some jars. This size and where's my bigger one? And this size are the handy jars for mix and paint. Uh, I'm going to get out a selection of paint, which I should have probably done before I started the video, but I didn't, so I'm going to get it out now. In this bin, I have some flesh colors. I'm just going to lay them out here. Uh, in this bin, I have some uh, varnishes. Uh, these have blushes and, and uh, some other colors. Uh, this is my new Gemini varnish. We're going to go over all of these so that you know what they're for and how to use them. That has a ladybug on it. Get off, ladybug. Gross. I do not like ladybugs. Uh, here's some more colors. And this one's, this one's totally devoted to my favorite color, which I'm only going to get one out. Uh, I always try to use... And the older one's up first, but for this particular uh, purpose, we're just going to use uh, whatever I pull out. Now, this is thinning on it, but you can see it has a paint color in it. That's, that, I save my little jars to, to mix a little bit of paint color. And these, okay, that one's good. Glazing gel. And that's purple. Okay. Nothing else in there is any good. Okay. Uh, they're labeled. This says 05. It's the color level of the flesh. It comes from 08, which would be the lightest color you can get, which is so pale, it almost look like, looks like blank varnish to me, and I do not use that color. Uh, I have some 05, some 06, some 04. some 03, and some 02. Uh, these darker colors would be for ethnic babies. These lighter colors, I call these middle colors. Um, I use to make my regular dolls. The 07 and 08 are barely any difference in them at all, and they're as pale as, uh, I don't even know anything to compare them to, they're so pale. You can barely tell you mixed anything up, it's so pale. But some people use those colors, and you're welcome to use them too. Uh, but we're going to be working with these colors. 05 is my go-to color. That's the one I, I mix. I label my little jars as well. But we're going to mix a brand new jar of 05, because I mixed something into that 05 the last time I was painting. And it's uh, not a true color anymore. <laughs> I was trying to hurry up and darken a baby without going through all the steps and so I just mixed a bunch of colors together. We're going to start with 05 and uh, all of them mix the same. See, see, you can tell on this 06 it's really starting to become a light color. This 05 is a little bit darker and this is not the color it's going to make your doll because once we put all the stuff into it it's going to be much lighter. It looks dark in the jar even when you mix it. It's just not that dark. Okay, we're gonna keep that one out and I'm gonna put these to the side for a minute. And I got to put some air on. It is burning hot in here. Oh no. Oh no, that's heat. <laughs> oh no. It is November the 4th, I believe, but we live in Tennessee. They say if you don't like the temperature, wait five minutes. 
And it's pretty much true. It was so cold this morning I had to put on heat, and now it's so cold you have to put on air. Okay, we're going to mix them all five, and I have a brand new product that I'm going to try. I watched a master artist painting a doll, and she used this stuff. It's called Exodus Thinning Oil. It's not necessary to have this, but sometimes the paint can be globby. I, I take steps to try to not have it globby, but sometimes it just is. And she claims, and I saw her using it, that this makes it smooth as silk. And you don't need much of it. You still have to put paint thinner in it. But first thing we're going to do is get us a toothpick. If you had a bigger jar of paint, you'd want to use a paint stick. And we're going to mix this up because if you can't see probably down the bottom of there that there's some oil that has separated from the paint. And we want to use the paint in its truest form. We're going to scrape the sides real good and we're going to just get this paint all ooey and gooey and good. And once we've got it all mixed up, which we've got that right now, we're gonna, I'm gonna use this big jar. And our goal here is we want to mix half a jar. And the reason we want to do that is because we may not mix it exactly right. We may want it darker. We may need to add a whole lot more paint thinner to it. And we need room in the jar to do that. So always take the notion in your head, I'm going to try to mix half a jar. I've missed it so bad before I had to pour some off in another jar and water it down a little bit more. But we're going to try not to do that in this video. I don't want to waste what's on this stick even. Paint's expensive. Put it in there. Okay, so we're, we're going to get one of our little throwaway brushes here, and we're just going to use globs. That's basically the way I do it. I don't do any measuring. They have tiny, tiny little um, measuring spoons that have weird names like dash and pinch and stuff that you can use. They're so tiny though I tried to use them because I wanted to make my paint the same every single time. But it's too hard. You get the paint in there you can't get it all out into your in, in, so you're not using that exact measurement anyway. So I just use a paintbrush like this and I just take blobs like this. Just get a blob and put it in here. And what I do is paint it around into the jar because it spreads it out and it won't be in a lump or a clump. And I already know from experience that that is not enough paint for this jar. So I'm going to get another glob. We might have to use all the paint in this little jar to tell you the truth. And I don't know if any of you have watched any other people's videos, but um, I did. I've watched a lot of people's videos before I ever started painting. And uh, I got tips and, and stuff from them. And that's how I know what to do. <laughs> Plus, I sat down and I really gave it a lot of thought. Uh, a lot of people think, and you probably think this too, that you have to be super creative to make a reborn doll and you don't. Okay, we've got most of our paint in there. I'm gonna open this Exodus and I'm gonna see, oh, no wonder she puts it in a little squirt bottle. It doesn't even have a squirt top on it. Oh my, oh. Well, I'm gonna use my little pipette thing. Where is that stupid thing? It's just a little plastic squeezy thing that you can squeeze stuff up with. Where is that stupid thing? Oh, it's over here. <laughs> it's just a little squeezy thing. And I'm gonna get a little bit of this out. And I'm going to put some of it in here. She didn't use much. She just put a little bit in there. And then she just sort of did it around. And it made her paint. Now, she didn't have this much paint because she was making only a tiny little well of it. So I may have to have a little bit more than she had in there. It made her paint super creamy. And it looked like you could just use it like it was, but it was too thick. There, like that. See how creamy that is? It's super creamy and almost looks like uh, chocolate syrup or something. It's just real, real, yeah, it's about the consistency of chocolate syrup. And what it does is it dissolves the paint really, really good for you. Sometimes if your paint is lumpy and old, 
it'll have in it something they call granules. You can't see them because they're super tiny. But this is supposed to melt the granules too so that you won't have these little spots on your doll. Sometimes once you start making your doll, you can't tell where they came from. But there's these little spots that will start to develop on your doll. And it's where one of those really tiny little granules settled in one spot on your doll. I'm gonna put this toothpick back in there so when I put my paint thinner in, it's gonna get that paint off that toothpick too because yeah, I'm stingy. And I'm gonna try to get it off that brush too. Paper towels, where are you? See, this is one of those times when you want a baby wipe. You got paint on your fingers. You don't want to get it on anything else. You need to keep very clean hands when you're making dolls. And don't worry about it if your nails start to look very dirty. It's not dirt, it's paint. It will stay in your nails until you take a shower or something. Or super scrub them with a scrub brush in the sink. Okay, now I've put my Exodus in there. I'm gonna have to get me a little squirt bottle for that because I just can't keep doing that. Uh, now I'm gonna add my paint thinner. Okay, so for this much paint, I'm gonna try to get this paint out too. I might put just a little more. Paint is expensive. And I, I'm, I have another video I'm gonna make on, it's gonna be called, what does it cost to make a doll anyway? But we can go over some of those highlights when we're mixing paint. The, rule, the, the general rule for beginners is, whatever it costs you to make that doll, keep up with all your expenses. What did I pay for the kit? What did I pay for the body? How much polyfill did I use? A lot, of new, a lot of new artists want to, oh yeah, I forgot to tell you, you need polyfill and glass beads in that other video. A lot of new artists want to buy little small quantities of everything because they're just unsure. I buy everything in bulk because it saves you the most money. And uh, if you're sure you want to make dolls and you're not going to give up even if you aren't super successful right at the beginning, then you're going to want to save as much money as possible on everything. And uh, to do that, you're going to need to buy things from the cheapest company or buy in bulk or something like that. And a little jar of paint like this, believe it or not, costs about 11 or $12. Now this will make many jars of this paint. And this jar will last a long time. I bet you can make $10 with it. The general uh, description says, three to twenty-five dolls or something you can make with this jar of paint. It all depends on how you use it. And beginners tend to waste a lot of paint. I don't waste any. That's why I put them in these jars instead of a paint palette. Well, if I take the top off, it might work a little better. Now we're gonna try with a half a jar of paint thinner. And the best way to tell how it's gonna look on your doll is to dab it on a piece of a paper towel. So I'm gonna get my paper towel out. I know how it looked the last time, and I know whether I liked it or not the last time. So this time, we are going to mix this super, super good. And it's got a, see it took all that, that Exodus took all that paint off that paintbrush. That is super good. Uh, I'm gonna put the top on and give it a little shaking to get this paint off the bottom and the sides. And I can't wait to start using this stuff. And then I'm going to get a clean brush because I super don't mind throwing those stupid brushes away. They're just that cheap. And I'm gonna test this super smooth looking paint. I've never seen it look so smooth. And that is a good color. I don't know if you can tell it looks very light and it kind of starts to dissipate really quick because it's thin and that's what we want. Maybe, and that's a, 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 a big maybe, it could take a little more paint. But I won't know that until I start to put it on a doll. And my paint stick, my uh, toothpick is down in the bottom down there and I can't seem to fish it out. It won't hurt anything being down in there. When the paint gets lower, I'll get it out. But 
there's still a little bit more paint in this jar and I'm gonna try to get a little bit more of it out because like I said paint is expensive every little bit counts I used to save my jars and then whenever uh, I was low on paint that's when I'd use them low on paint get out those jars I still do that to my paint uh, uh, my uh, sealers and stuff like that which we're going to talk about those too seem to be getting much out of there. I'll tell you what I'm going to do is drop it down in there for a minute. <laughs> that seems weird, I know, but that paint thinner will just take all that paint right out of it. Okay, while that's marinating, we're going to talk about some other little uh, things like sealers and stuff. Uh, dolls made out of vinyl. You're not supposed to have to put any kind of sealer on. These are sealers I bought that were hugely expensive. Uh, well, this says Gemini sealer on it, and this says Pratt sealer on it. But this really has that Beatrice Clementi sealer in it. Hugely expensive. And I didn't even like it. It, um, it boogers up real easy. All right, that sounds crude, I know, but that's the only word I know for it. You, while you're putting it on the doll, you'll start to see little boogers all over the doll. And it's paint sealer that's boogered up. And uh, and I don't like that. That's just extra work for me. And uh, I don't want to have to deal with it. And it wasn't that good of a sealer anyway. People go, oh, it's the best. Well, I guess that's a matter of opinion. Because I didn't like it. Uh, there's our 05 and it helps to label your jars I'm gonna write 05 on here you can write flesh you can write whatever you want to I just write 05 okay now we also have another color that's called warm blush and I I, I dabbled around with some of these colors. This could be warm blush with something mixed in it. I don't really know. I was trying to make, yeah, this is not a straight color. I can tell right away it's not. Yeah, it's too pink. Um, it's uh, probably, some, I don't know. I, I, I can't say what it is. This looks more like warm blush. Let me look at it. This is a paint, yeah, this looks right. This is a paint you're gonna want super thin. Yeah, it is super thin. It, you're gonna want it super thin. I've been using this jar for a long time because it used to be all the way up to the top. This also looks like another color I dabbled around with. I don't even know what those colors are. You mix this the same as you mix the 05. You just blob in some and just, you know, do all that stuff. This does not contain any of this Exodus stuff because I just got that today. And then the other color that I use a lot of is just the regular blush. It's called Lip, Nail, and Blush. And there's two ways to mix it. One way is in this jar like this, so that you can put it on the doll. For, and this is very dark. We're gonna have to lighten this one up. Uh, yeah, that's too dark. Uh, one way is in this jar like this where you can blush your doll with it. You can give her a blushy skin tone or whatever. And the other way is to make it for their lips and their nails. And that's what, let me find it. I have a little tiny jar here somewhere. That's not it. It says lips on it. And what it is is thinning medium. And I took the thinning medium and I just put the color right into it. And, uh, and this is very translucent. It looks super dark, but on the doll, it's very, very translucent because it's got thinning medium in it. Now, we're gonna talk about some thinning mediums and, and other types of mediums. I'm gonna have to lighten this up. It's super, super dark, but we'll get to that in a minute. I bought from a lady on uh, eBay a bunch of jars of that Pratt in between when they had the uh, the Genesis and before they came out with the, the Gemini, uh, Bountiful Baby made their own. 
Denise Pratt, she's the owner of Bountiful Baby. And she made her own stuff and it was called Pratt. Pratt Paints. This says Pratt 2. It's, it's, it's a sealer. It's sealer number 2. They're, they come in different matteness, I guess you call it. And this is mat 3. And then there's a mat 1. And this lady had a whole bunch of these jars. And they work plenty good for some things. But for other things, you don't want to use these. So I brought, I bought me a set of the Gemini matte varnish for, and one of the places is the head. If you want to put hair on your doll with pencils, it has to be sealed with a good matte varnish. Otherwise, the pencils will not write on the head. I'm gonna go ahead and water this down a little. Oh, uh, so. What you have to do is, it's still very dark, but I'm gonna leave it like that for right now. Uh, what you need to do is uh, have a super good matte varnish for the head. Now the arms and the legs, they don't need that because you're not gonna ride on them. Any matte varnish will work for them. So that's why I bought these really cheap Pratt paints. And that's why I have two different jars here. This jar still contains Beatrice Clementi. I haven't cleaned it out yet, but I did clean this one out really good and wash it and everything. And uh, it uh, now has some of this Pratt in it. So I use this for the arms and the legs and I'm gonna use this for the heads because I do draw pencil on my dolls a lot. I have started matting, matting, uh, rooting almost all my dolls now. I've, got, I've gotten pretty good at that. So. I, I may root them. If you root your dolls, they recommend that you don't put any sealer on them, the head, because it's crunchy, kind of, and it, uh, it makes the needle real hard to go in, and, and it makes uh, rooting, the rooting process super hard. Uh, anyway, in this container, I've got some other colors. Uh, when you're painting dolls, there's two different methods you can use. You're probably going, yeah, I already know it's, it's air dry and it's, and it's heat set. Well, those are methods, but this is what I'm talking about. Whether or not you use heat set or matte varnish, matte varnish, heat set or, or air dry, it doesn't matter. There's two methods. One method is called the primary method. And in the primary method, you use colors like red and blue and yellow, and I don't seem to have any yellow. Well, it's probably in one of them other things up there. And you use those primary colors to mix colors that you want to use. I find that super hard because, and everybody I see doing it, I see them doing this. It wastes a lot of paint. And why would you need to sit there and try to mix blush color when you can just buy blush color? I mean, that's what I do. But some people, they make super watery washes. They'll put blue on their doll, they'll put yellow on their doll, green on their doll. I just think it's funky. I tried to use that method and follow somebody. Yeah, I made the ugliest doll I've ever made. So I do not recommend that procedure. But you will find that a really, really, really lot of the videos you're watching, they're using the primary method. I particularly think that making reborn dolls is requires you to develop a repeatable process. A process by which you can make good looking dolls every single time. You don't have to go, oh my goodness, that green is so dark, now my doll looks like an alien. Because you didn't use plain green on your doll. I mean, I don't understand why green goes on a doll anyway. But anyway, uh, I developed my own repeatable process. You mix your paint, and when you start getting really low on your paint, this is not low. It looks low, but it's not low. This is a lot of paint. You paint many babies with this. But when it starts really getting low, I'm talking, there's a skim on the bottom. You don't want to start a doll like that because you might not can finish with it. So you want to mix new paint. That way you don't have the arms and legs are one color and the face is slightly different color. You want 
to remix your paint before you run out. Always. And uh, if your paint looks like it's getting too gritty, that's what they mean by those little uh, uh, whatever I called them before. I can't remember. I've got a little touch of dementia, I guess. Uh, granules. If, if it looks like it's getting too many granules in it, just pour it out and make new. But this is how you mix paint. Okay, now when you're using your sealer, there are two, two ways you can use your sealer. You can use it straight or you can dilute. Some of them recommend that you don't dilute, but you will go through your sealer so fast. I had a hundred jars of this Pratt sealer. A hundred jars. I went through it like crazy because I was using it straight. But you can, you can, um, oh, I see a little feller down in there. It is definitely fall. You can tell that by the fact that there are little uh, ladybugs and stink bugs pretty much everywhere. They just get in and they just find them a little nook and they just get in it and, and there they stay until probably spring. <laughs> I don't want them in my paint little things though. But anyway, I mix the paint for the arms and leg, the sealer, for the arms and legs with a little bit of paint thinner. Now the what goes on the head, I try to use it straight because I want to draw hair on their heads. May not want to forever because I am rooting hair now, but rooting hair takes a long time and not everybody likes rooted hair. Now in here you can tell I have different kinds of uh, things in here. I have something called Look Alive, Look Alive. It's called Look Alive. It's supposed to give the baby a look, a texture to their skin that looks like real baby skin texture. I've never used it. I just bought it. I have two jars of it. I have this stuff called Thick Medium. Uh, the Thick Medium is what most people use to put hair on a doll because it gives a raised appearance, I guess you'd call it. Uh, if you were trying to make some kind of alternative doll and you want it to have big, bubulous, raised up veins on it, this would be something you could use for that. Um, but uh, I haven't used either one of those because I haven't really been painting here lately. I've been uh, experimenting with other measures like air dry, which uh, this is my second go around with air dry and it's just no, 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 no. Uh, but. Uh, I, ha I bought this sienna color. It's sort of a yellow color, but it's a, a yellowy brown color. Um, I saw a lady doing a doll and she used it. And uh, I've got a couple of browns that you can use to make hair if I decide I want to. I have some burnt umber. I have some purple. Uh, this is eyelid purple. I don't know why dolls need purple eyelids, but that's what it's for. I use it for creases. I have one container of something called creases. Uh, here it is. This is creases. Looks purpley red. And this is eyelid purple. Looks purpley red. So I don't know if I, I haven't used the creases yet. I've always used the eyelid purple for that. And the creases are just, you know, the little places on the doll where, where they have a crease where, you know, you know, on a normal baby, it would be a little bit slightly different color. You just put it in these little creases and, uh, and it gives them more depth to their skin tone so that they can look more like a real baby instead of a piece of plastic, you know. But anyway, these are the colors I have and I haven't decided if I wanna get any more colors at all. Oh, vein blue. Yeah, there's vein blue too. Uh, there's two different blues, one of them, is ultramarine blue and it looks like this in a jar. It's very just blue. And then there's the vein blue and it looks kind of like a teal, tealish color of blue. This is what you do the veins with. Uh, hard, you need the, the tiniest little paintbrush that has like one hair in it or you'll make the fattest veins. But I discovered something that 
I'm going to let out my secret that you can do to make your veins. And I've done it on several dolls and it looked really good to me. Other people may not like it. I heard about it and I said, I'm going to try it. I bought these colors when I was shopping at Jerry's Artorama. I bought some colors of pencils that I didn't have. Uh, and one of the colors I bought was some tealy colored pencils. These two are the same color. I don't know how I ended up with two of them. And this one's a little bit lighter. And I was going to experiment with making veins with pencils. And it works. And this is the one you want. It's aquamarine. It makes really, you make this pencil very sharp. And it makes really, really thin looking veins. You don't want your veins to be super fat. They look so fake when they're super fat. I'm going to use Kelsey. This is my test kit for right now. And if I can pull her out of the crapper when I get done testing on her, then uh, I'm going to make her into a cuddle baby. And I'm going to show you. I'm, gonna make, I'm just going to create a vein on her head and show you how it works. You just And, and it's real hard because she doesn't have any sealer on her. You may not can see it on camera. You just make a squiggly line across her head like that. And then you just branch it off a little bit. I should use the darker pencil so you can actually see it. Uh, the rule is you're not supposed to be able to see it on camera, but I want you to be able to see what a vein looks like if you make it. This is way too dark. I'll get it off later, though, with some alcohol or something. But it's just a sort of a... It's sort of an example of how you make a vein. And, uh, and then when you paint over it, it won't be this dark because I just did this for demonstration purposes. But uh, after you uh, paint over it, it kind of blends into the background and it looks natural like a vein supposed to look. And, uh, oh crap, just knock it. this one contains alcohol. <laughs> Anyway, and alcohol will not hurt your dog at all. I'm going to have to use some acetone on that. Oh, crap. Oh, well. Here we go. Handy dandy bucket of acetone. I use it whenever I need it. I try to keep my test kit clean. Uh, Dolls by Sandy will send you a test piece, but it's this pink awful vinyl that's nothing like a doll you're going to make and you can't test anything on it because it's so crappy. <laughs> Don't even bother to get it. <laughs> you just need the tiniest, tiniest bit of acetone. Just make your rag a little bit wet. And there you go. It's gone. Completely gone. And she's ready to use again. And see it didn't hurt her at all because I didn't put her down in the acetone. Ooh, and acetone really stinks. But it evaporates super, super quick. In just like three minutes, it's that dry, that rag will be dry. It's that quick. But anyway, paints. What else can we talk about about paints? Some people, and I don't recommend this, some people take sealer and mix it in with every color. They put it in the jar with their color. They think that it helps the paint stick. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, you won't have any problem. Okay, let me rephrase. You might have a problem getting the paint to stick unless you prep your kit properly. A properly prepared kit and you won't have any problem getting the paint to stick. And this is what you do to properly prepare your kit. First, you want to wash your kit. You can do it in a clean sink, a wash tub, anything. You want to make you some warm, not hot, not cold, just lukewarm like you'd bathe a newborn baby in or something. Water. And put a little tiny bit of some kind of dish soap in it. I use this kind. I don't know why. It's just what I picked up at the store. And you can see I only use little drops. And if, if you don't have a sink, like me and my, my, my uh, studio does not have a sink, 
I put it in a spray bottle and spray it on the doll and wipe it off with a rag. When, when you've done that and dried the doll, you want to use alcohol next. What we're trying to do is remove any dirt that got on the doll at the factory. And believe me, they're plenty dirty. And any sort of oils or anything that's used in the manufacture of the doll. So you want to wash your kit. So you're going to need some alcohol. I forgot to say that. You're going to need two or three of these little squirt bottles. They're real nice and handy. I'm going to put dish soap in this one with water. I haven't done it yet. But I have my alcohol one and I have my uh, one for the hair already. And I got different colors, so hopefully I can tell them apart. I know this aqua colored one is uh, the hair stuff. And the pink one is alcohol. And the blue one's going to be water. Of course, blue for water. Anyway, uh, uh, and after you've done that, and the kit is dry. Now, if you can't wait for your kit to get dry because you're just in a big hurry, you can bake your kit for a few minutes and it'll get dry. What I do is I try not to get anything inside the head. I hold the head upside down like this and I wash it real good and rinse it off under the faucet, dry it off, and nothing gets inside. You don't want it to be wet when you, when you paint it. And I do the arms and legs the same way. Then you can put it on your drying rack and let it dry if you want to. Can you see this on the drying rack? I don't know. I can't tell which one of these pegs you can actually see. But anyway, or you can just uh, dry it yourself. Like I said, if you can't wait and you're in a hurry, because, well, I'm just on fire to paint it all. You just put it in your oven and bake it a while and, uh, and get it good and dry. Now, when the dolls come out, they're going to be scalding hot. I recommend you have some kind of gloves or something to pick them up with. These are real handy for hot, hot dolls. There's a couple times when you're making a doll that you're going to need the doll to be hot. And some people recommend the doll be hot for certain procedures and some people don't. I used to do it with my doll hot and that would be put the eyes in. This one doesn't need any. It's a sleeping baby. But uh, dolls with eyes, you have to press and press and press and press. See how hard it is to press this doll? If it's really hot, it'll press easier. But I can press it just fine, and it won't hurt the doll at all. You press it and press it and press it and press it until the eye socket's real close to this hole. And then you're able to uh, cut it out and put the eye in. But, and this doll is very thick, so you can't go by this doll. Some dolls have thick vinyl, some have thin vinyl. But uh, the thick dolls, they're harder to root, they're harder to put the eyes in, they're harder for everything. But anyway, we were supposed to be mixing paint in this video, and I get off on all kinds of tangents. And I don't have anybody to steer me back. <laughs> so anyway, uh, uh, paints like, colors like this, highly staining, you want to mix them very, very thin. And by that I mean super watery. Well, no, there's no water in these. You don't put water in these at all. You put paint thinner. But uh, this blue uh, is used for shadowing. And uh, we want it to be dark enough that you can put a shadow on the doll, but super light. See how light that is? It's just super light. And uh, sometimes it's hard to tell because we have bright lights above our tables so that we can see real good what we're doing to the doll. And sometimes it sort of washes out some of what you see, or supposed to see, rather. So, uh, and the same thing with your, this blue. I like to use this blue to shadow more than that blue. But I watched a video where the master artist who was doing the, see there's a difference in the color. This one's uh, more like a teal color. And this one's more like a, I don't know, a regular blue, I guess. But uh, she was using regular blue. She didn't use this color right here. And uh, I started a doll, and it's still in progress, and I'm not happy with it at all. And I guess you can see I have a toothbrush here. <laughs> I forgot to say you need a toothbrush. Uh, this is used when you're rooting your doll. Also, if you're stripping a doll, you, you might need to get, use it to... Uh, to make sure you can get the, the acetone way down into these cracks and crevices and up in the nose to get all the paint off of her. This doll's been stripped several times 
As you can see, you can strip them real good. She's my test kit. I use them and use them and use them and use them. <laughs> and then when they start to look really bad, I try to make a, a doll out of them that I can at least sell for 50 or $100, you know. And uh, stink bugs, they're pretty bad up here. Um, and so are ladybugs. Uh, but anyway, um, you do need a toothbrush. And uh, I was using a little baby hairbrush comb, and, but it pulls out too much of the hair. I'm gonna try a little baby brush. This doesn't do anything, it's too soft. And the bristles are too far apart and the comb just rips the hair right out of the head. Before, before you uh, glue it down, it's kind of a little bit touchy. And this toothbrush, some of it's going to come out anyway, but this toothbrush is just perfect. Anyway, uh, I can't think of anything else about mixing paint. Uh, if anybody leaves anything in the comments, I will uh, cover some more about mixing paint if you have a question or something. But as far as I can tell, that's about all I have about mixing paint. It's really super easy. And once you get your paint mixed, the next thing you're going to want to do is put it on a doll. So in our next video, we're going to get out a kit and we're going to prep it and we're going to seal it and we're going to get it ready to be painted. So happy reborning.